Well, uh, as you said, my name is Tanner Stewart, uh, CEO uh, of Stewart Vertical Farms, Inc., a Canadian-based cannabis company focused on the advancement of sustainable agriculture through the combination of proven automation, vertical farming, and land-based aquaculture. Our mandate is to produce premium cannabis with little to no waste, on par or lower than the best-in-class greenhouses operating today. So we are indoor vertical aquaponics farmers. Uh, I'm here today to speak to you about what aquaponics is and what I believe sustainability means to the cannabis industry. Well, let's start with uh, who am I? Uh, well, after having spent two years as a tree planter after high school, I decided that 14 weeks of steady work and smoking weed in the woods wasn't a good long-term career path. Uh, so I uh, moved to Western Canada and became an entrepreneur at 21 years old. My, uh, my first business was in the uh, construction industry, specializing in structural steel uh, fabrication, pipe and tanks. Basically, if it was built of steel, uh, we would make it. And uh, I grew that company to over $40 million a year and 220 tradespeople in, in just under uh, seven years. Uh, but then at 28 years old and roughly six years ago, I had a major life-changing event. Uh, my wife became pregnant with our soon-to-be-born first son. And it was at that moment that I uh, panicked uh, and uh, started questioning everything I was doing in my life. You know, where am I going? What am I doing? Uh, you know, how can I make the, better, the world a better place? And most importantly, what am I doing that could inspire and set examples for my children? Well, sometimes you ask the question and the universe gives you the answer. And literally, during the nine month term that Clark was getting uh, uh, created, I was serendipitously introduced to two agriculture technology startups. Uh, one was in Whitefish, Montana, called the Green Powerhouse, an indoor uh, semi-closed loop system that processes waste biomass into carbon char feeds the off-gas to algae and converts said algae into a humic rich uh, soil amendment. And uh, right after that, I got introduced to another one in Alberta that was developing an indoor vertical aquaponics farm focused on production of leafy greens and organic tilapia. So between the green powerhouse and being introduced to aquaponics, uh, I became absolutely hooked on the uh, concept of semi-closed loop systems and their potential to create amazing products with little to no waste. Uh, since, you know, since then I haven't looked back, I brought my entire family along for the ride and uh, here I stand today gratefully in front of, uh, of you brilliant and, and visionary people uh, in this cannabis industry. Uh, that's a picture of me receiving my very first uh, produce consumer packaged good, which was, uh, you know, aquaponically grown romaine lettuce uh, with my uh, daughter, who was uh, born, a, born a couple years uh, after Clark. And my kids both grew up uh, in indoor vertical farming. They, they think it's uh, a pretty, pretty normal thing. So what is aquaponics and how does it work? Well, aquaponics is the marriage of fish farming and plant production into a single farming system that makes use of fish water to supply the nutrients to the plants. Um, where normally a fish farm creates a significant waste stream when built on its own, that waste stream is actually a vibrant source of nutrient created from a li living ecosystem, arguably on par or maybe even greater than uh, the best of living soil. Um, so there have been some comparative trials done showing particular cannabis strains expressing higher overall terpene and specific cannabinoids versus a hydroponic system or a living soil system. Uh, but much more thorough and repetitive trials need to be done to truly understand the impact of a living nutrient source on the chemical expression uh, in, in plants. That's, that's really the big question. Uh, so this slide is from a trial by an aquaponics firm out of the States named Stephen Rasner. So a brief, a brief history, uh, the earliest forms of aquaponics systems were traced back to the ancient Aztec people who lived in central Mexico about 1000 AD. 
uh, the Aztecs cultivated agricultural, agricultural islands known as chinapas, uh, where plants were raised on stationary or sometimes movable islands in lake shallows, and waste materials were dredged uh, up from the chinapas canals and surrounding cities, and they were used to manually uh, irrigate the plants. So the overall philosophy of an aquaponics farmer is based on the principles of mimicking Mother Nature's ecosystems and ultimately setting out on a journey uh, to zero waste, which uh, leads me to my next topic of what is sustainability? Well, I believe most envision true sustainability as being a situation where companies and humans alike exist on the planet creating little to no impact. But what is it really to them and, and to our industry? It's very complicated, very complicated. And people are having a hard time wrapping their heads around how to personally approach it in their households should they have the financial luxury to consider it and as well in their businesses. So what are the steps that we can really take uh, or, or what, what are the, first I'll frame the issues, what are the, what are the big issues in sustainability that agriculture and the cannabis industry is facing as a whole? Well, we'll start with water. So 70% uh, of the world's yearly fresh water consumption is purely due to agriculture. Uh, in California in the last decade when they had their major droughts, farmers there were spending millions of dollars to use drilling rigs to pull water out of ancient aquifers that are so far deep in the ground uh, that those aquifers will never be replenished from, uh, from uh, topsoil runoff. Of course, uh, our industry is using a lot of energy, right? You know, of course, sunlight is the cheapest form of energy we have, but it doesn't necessarily mean an indoor greenhouse or an indoor grow uh, can't be sustainable or more sustainable based on where the energy is coming from. Hydro, nuclear, is it coal? Is it fossil fuel driven? These are all the questions that come with energy consumption. And this is a big one, synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides. So I think there's a big misconception in the agriculture industry about where the carbon footprint really comes from. Uh, everybody likes to focus on food miles and distance of transportation of food. Well, really that's minuscule in the grand scheme of, uh, of things. It's the synthetic fertilizers, herbicides, and pesticides. It's the chemicals that we produce and we layer year over year over year onto the same land. That's where the carbon footprint comes from. It is a massive endeavor to do this and, uh, and continually kill off the soil. So soil degradation. Another big one, uh, you know, the industrialized, far the industrialized farming system is set up so that your soil becomes dependent on the nutrients and chemicals that they supply you. Uh, once you kill off the soil, you have to keep pumping nutrients back into it. Dead soil is called dirt. Living soil captures carbon, sequesters carbon and it's more drought proof because you've got biomass to hold water. And here's a big one uh, in our industry, um, packaging, right? Packaging, one-time use consumables. Um, you know, this is a major issue. So I like this, you know, three months of waste, illegal versus illegal cannabis, there's three sandwich bags there, right? You know, uh, so I don't know when we're gonna be allowed to start selling sandwich bags, but it would definitely be a little bit less waste, but waste, is the summary of our issues. So we're wasting everything in every industry. You know, it's not just the cannabis or agriculture industry, but you know, we go out of our way to create things that are gonna go in the dump right away. And we're ultimately wasting time and money on a global scale. So what are the solutions? Well, it's simple. There's one silver bullet. You do everything as sustainable as possible today. It doesn't matter what the cost, and you just pass it on to the customer because they don't mind paying double for your product as long as they're saving the world, right? Just kidding, don't do that because they care and they will not pay double for your products. Um, so one of the biggest issues with sustainable brands is the concept that the consumer should have to pay. Uh, I don't for a minute believe that that's the case and, uh, 
And we have the technologies to know how and reach today to be more sustainable and less wasteful. Uh, but if we're doing it right, our products should eventually cost less. So here's some steps. Step one, know your market. Uh, understand the upper limits of your local retail market and set your pricing limits and targets. Uh, it should be every sustainable focused company's goal to produce their products on an equal to or lesser than cost than your competitors that couldn't give a rip. Step two, determine your impact by understanding your supply chain. Uh, like any good wasteaholic, the first step in recovery is admitting we have a problem and understanding your cost to address it. So every input in your operation has an impact. Your goal should be to lower the impact and control the cost as you do it. Step three, map your journey. So once you understand your supply chain and its environmental impact, cost, price tolerance of your market, now you can build a short, mid, and long-term roadmap to get where you want to be. You know, start with the no-brainers. It's more sustainable and costs less. Then go to the uh, reasonable cost increase metrics. Uh, what will my consumers bear in this market? And will, will it increase my brand value? And, uh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, make changes, and then make changes as you find better solutions and the global supply chain catches up to the cost that you require. Sometimes you just have to wait uh, until there's enough supply to, uh, to do what you really wanna do. So as an example of this within Stewart Farms, uh, we made the choice to do everything possible to eliminate plastic in our, in our packaging. The Canadian cannabis consumer is not happy <laughs> with the excessive plastic they're forced to buy. And uh, you know nobody likes buying a half ounce container with one gram of uh, weed in it, right? And step four, make money. So if you are or decide to become one of these sustainable focused companies, investors, or individuals, it is crucial that you ensure profitability and financial sustainability within all your endeavors. Uh, the more money you make, the more money will get invested into a better tomorrow. So one of the most important things that environmentally driven entrepreneur can do is focus and not lose sight of no margin, no mission. And finally, no other industry, in my opinion, on this planet has a better shot of making agriculture and consumer packaged goods as sustainable as they can be, as no other agriculture crop in the world has as many margin creating opportunities in life utilities as this miracle plant. Thank you. And now with my last two minutes, I will do a shameless promo and plug of a film that I'm an executive producer on called The Need to Grow, uh, uh, narrated by Rosario Dawson. It's based on the importance of living soil to our planet, and I think every entrepreneur and cannabis industry player should see this film. It's been viewed by thousands of people around the world in 175 countries. It's available on Vimeo and Amazon. Go. That's what you say. If we stay on our course, we can look at a worldwide catastrophe. Industrial agriculture is first and foremost a war against the earth because it is a war against all species since you're bringing more chemicals into food production and all they're doing is killing. We cannot fight nature. You cannot poison things to the extent that where you quote win. It's a challenge to live in a world where our government cannot be counted on to defend us from an industrial food system that's actually making us sick. Hopefully soon the planet will change. People should really learn about how to help your community and help yourself in life. You can grow 100% organic, nutrient-dense food at warp speed, basically. This stuff will grow anything. There is a secret here that we've got to unlock. What we've tried to do here is accelerate the regeneration of soil. Well, I've done some testing like behind your back. Okay, so you're doing in four to five days what nature would take in about 400 years. 400 years. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Disrupting food, fuel, and fertilizer all in one little powerhouse. You're going to have a lot of pushback. I'm not worried about it getting squashed before it gets out. Yeah. You don't get points for doing the right thing, and that's the right thing. You just have to do it.
We're trying to change Girl Scout cookies so they're healthier. Right now we have at least 45,000 signatures. Last minute they decided that the representative was going to be in a meeting. They hung up on me. You never know what could be happening there. They're just called free share. They're just not listening. We just heard a rumor that, that we might lose our farm. 4.30 a.m., telephone rings. I knew it could not be good news. Looking at the amount of heat that needed to be generated, I'm, I'm a little suspicious. To say that we care about the future of this planet, to say that we care about the survival of our species, and to not take action is simply no longer an option. Hopefully, we'll recover from this.